look in the universe and we see the effects of gravity, and let's say, let's add up all the stars and galaxies and, and planets and comets and black holes, everything we know about, to account for this gravity that we see. And when you add in the dark matter, this, this extra gravity, it turns the universe into the universe that we see. That's why we know the dark matter is real. We don't know what it is, but we know it's there because we can't make the universe as we see it unless we put this extra gravity into our simulations to match the gravity that we see. Everything that we know in the universe is made up of atoms and more specifically particles like protons, neutrons, and electrons. Normal matter consists of these particles which can be categorized in one of three fundamental ways. Quarks, bosons, and leptons, as well as their antimatter counterparts, antiquarks and antileptons. Particles such as quarks have other interesting ways of being organized, such as flavors. These flavors are known as up, down, top, bottom, strange, and charm. Yes, sorry, unfortunately cookie dough was out of stock when flavors were decided. These unique flavors are used to describe different physical properties and how the particles interact. Leptons, on the other hand, are categorized on the basis of their properties of decay. Likewise, bosons are force-carrying particles related to the four fundamental forces of the universe. Weak and strong forces, electromagnetic forces, and gravitational forces. The standard model of physics gives us an inside look at the quantum world and also describes the forces that govern how these particles interact with each other. One such interaction is the photorealistic effect, a physics-related phenomenon where an atom that absorbs electromagnetic radiation peaks at a higher energy state and then moves to a less energetic state and emits a photon, hence its name. But what happens when they don't emit photons or are detectable by our scientific instrumentation? This is a problem that scientists have tried to decipher for many years. Unlike visible and detectable particles, things get a little weird with these other particles that physics tells us are there but we cannot sense them. Particle physicists are convinced that it might be an exotic particle that doesn't interact with us, doesn't interact with our light, with our telescopes, but that it has gravity. So these particles are doing their own thing, invisible to us, but otherwise attracting our matter into their, it, nucleating us among them. Particles that do not emit, reflect, or absorb electromagnetic radiation can be defined as dark matter. Apparently, dark matter is the reason why galaxies and other galactic formations are possible and look the way they do. Dark matter also holds clusters of galaxies together, preventing them from flinging and spiraling out of shape millions of years ago. But how are we so sure about dark matter's role in the universe when we aren't even sure where and what it is? As scientists always do, by conducting experiments and hours and hours of observing galaxies, they found out that these clusters of stars require a much, much larger amount of mass to maintain their shape. Galaxies are secretly thick and proud of it. Moreover, when we look at other systems with our telescopes, we see that Kepler's laws of planetary motion as well as gravitation aren't behaving as the laws of physics dictate they should, if the matter we see is all there is. This is because of this additional dark factor. We can't see it, but it's there. That means gravity affects both normal and dark matter. Scientists think that dark matter might express itself in the universe as weakly interacting massive particles, or WIMPs. Unlike those kids you knew from middle school, WIMPs are actually these heavy and slow types of particles, which would explain the galactic clumping and web systems we observe. As mentioned before, astronomers see the effects of gravity which suggests that there are forms of matter at a higher quantity than what is observed. Scientists have estimated the universe as being composed of 71.4% dark energy, 24% dark matter, and everything else like atoms only contributing to 4.6%. Everything we see, hear, touch, and interact with is less than 5% of what we know is out there. Isn't that insane? Dark matter is also the cause of light bending due to gravity despite the absence of a cosmic entity to cause gravitational lensing. When dark matter interacts with gravity, you will end up seeing objects in different places in the sky relative to where they actually are. This occurs because mass bends and even warps the fabric of space-time. 
This bends the path in which light travels, resulting in a viewing of the star in a different place when you look through a microscope. It's like dark matter itself is trying to give us clues about its presence. Scientists have thought about three different ways of finding dark matter particles. Using Earth satellites to detect particle collisions, using lab detectors, and using particle colliders to try to create dark matter. We have thought about a more common particle and how it could be responsible for dark matter. Neutrinos are a type of particle that does not interact with light. However, they have too much energy and a small quantity of mass to be categorized as dark matter. Dark matter might be composed of a different and new type of particle that hasn't been discovered yet. There is also a possibility that dark matter comes from a universe in a separate dimension interjecting with our universe and is affecting objects with mass that we can observe and detect? Maybe looking at dark energy can help us understand the dark matter better as well. Some mysterious pressure in the vacuum of space acting opposite the force of gravity, whatever it is, we call it dark energy. That's our placeholder term to describe what we observe the acceleration of the universe. Nothing known will stop this. So there's been some concern that maybe space does not have the flexibility necessary to allow such rapid expansion. And might space tear in some way previously unimagined? And what does that even mean? What is, does the question even have validity? In 1929, Edwin Hubble discovered that the universe is expanding. Earlier, scientists expected the expansion to be slowing due to the force of gravity. Without Hubble's discovery, space telescopes perhaps wouldn't have become a reality. Later, the Hubble Space Telescope continued working on its inspirations work and tried to measure the expansion rate of the universe. Scientists actually came up with a clever way of trying to calculate this rate. They knew that type 1a supernovae are a type of stellar object that emits a fixed value for luminosity during their explosion. So, scientists used this data to their advantage by measuring the brightness and calculating their distances. Due to the expansion of the universe, the light wavelengths that travel to us are now stretched out. This is known as cosmological redshift. Using the supernova data would then allow them to measure the redshift that had occurred from the point where the light left the supernova. They could use this information to measure the redshift relating to the universe's expansion. The scientists were expecting the experiments to bring back data that will show the expansion is slowing down, but the results surprised them. They realized that the galaxies were not only moving away from us, but were accelerating. Now, what would cause these galaxies to speed up? Before we get to the answer to that question, let's talk about energy. From the notion and understanding of the laws of conservation, we know that energy cannot be created or destroyed. But there are some strange exceptions. The world of physics is bizarre and marvelous. If the object we are considering is smaller than Planck's constant divided by 2 pi, like particles for example, it can actually come in and out of existence. How wild is that? Don't know what that means? Well, this happens when matter and antimatter annihilate each other. Particles never sit still and always have energy, even in very small amounts. They are always moving or vibrating and traveling in and out of existence at a fluctuating rate. Us humans are incredibly limited in our vision and what wavelengths we can perceive. According to NASA, the human eye can detect wavelengths between 380 and 700 nanometers. This is what we refer to as visible light. Light, or electromagnetic radiation, has a wide spectrum of wavelengths we can detect with the naked eye or scientific instrumentation. Humans can only observe a very small portion of the spectrum. This is due to biological factors. Every color we know has a different wavelength associated with it. Violet has very short wavelengths compared to red, which has the longest. The colors of objects can allow us to understand different aspects of their composition, like chemicals or temperatures. Fireworks, for example, emit different colors because they use different types of metals. Stars and other stellar objects in space can be blue or red, which informs us about how hot or cool the surface and body can be. But their wavelengths can also change and tell us how far away they are from us as compared to before. 
If the universe was just made up of normal matter and forces we interact with on a daily basis, everything in outer space would be equally distributed and slowing in expansion speed. But clearly, that is not what is happening. Two-thirds of all the energy around us consists of this anti-gravity force that we can't see or measure. This is not normal energy, this is dark energy. Scientists have come up with alternative theories and explanations for dark matter and dark energy. In science, in astrophysics in particular, you have the capacity to measure something, even if you don't know what it is. For example, you could measure the fact that something is falling to the ground, but not know what it is or what's causing it or why, but you can measure it. You can measure the sun moving across the sky, build calendars based on that, and not even know that Earth goes around the sun. You can make all manner of measurements and not know what's causing it. We measure this thing we're calling dark matter. We measure this phenomenon, dark energy, that's forcing the universe to accelerate. Einstein thought there was a cosmological constant. Some suggest that we all float in this space fluid we can't directly see. Maybe Einstein's theory of gravity is incorrect and gravity is actually an all-encompassing concept that includes a logical explanation for this accelerating expansion. Or maybe we are intersecting the path of another universe and can't see it because we are limited to our three physical dimensions and temporal dimension. Well, possibly, there could be many dimensions that all play a role in the strange scientific phenomena we encounter in the universe. It may be that the dark matter is not matter at all. It's the gravity from ordinary matter from a nearby other universe in the multiverse whose gravitational influence we feel. And here we are, you know, saying, ooh, we have a mysterious gravity, call it dark matter. Really, it's just ordinary matter doing its thing in an adjacent universe. We don't have data for this, but we have good theoretical and philosophical reasons to think that a multiverse exists. Hopefully, all the current and future NASA missions and telescopes will bring us some answers soon. We live in a mysterious universe and human curiosity will guide us to the answers to these questions. One can't help but wonder about all the strange things that happen all around us.